Hi everyone. So today we'll be discussing the sixth drug in the neuropharmacology series, that is levetiracin. So first we will go to the mechanism of action of levetiracin. So this is little different than the channel blockers that are the usual anti-seizure medications. So here levetiracin acts by binding to the synaptic vesicle protein isoform SV2A in the brain. So this SV2A is actually involved in synaptic vesicle exocytosis of neurotransmitters. So this actually causes a calcium dependent vesicular neurotransmitter release and by acting on these SV2A receptors, levetiracin decreases the rate of vesicle release of neurotransmitters. Now coming to the indications of levetiracin. So I have highlighted the FDA approved indications in orange. So it is approved both as a monotherapy as well as an urgent therapy for focal onset seizures and for juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and primary generalized tonic-clonic seizures, it is approved only as an urgent therapy, not as a monotherapy. And it also has other off-label uses. It also has other off-label uses and the most common one being as an IV formulation in status epilepticus. And there are also few uh, control studies for levetiracetam as a prophylactic agent for migraine headaches and also its use as seizure prophylaxis after severe traumatic brain injury. But remember that the FDA approved indications both as a monotherapy as well as adjunct therapy is only for focal onset seizures and for primarily generalized tonic-clonic seizures and juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, it is FDA approved only as an adjunct therapy. Now coming to the formulations, so we have tablet formulations, we have IV formulations and we also have oral solutions. So the tablets actually come both in an immediate release tablet as well as an extended release tablet and the immediate release tablets actually come in multiples of 250 and 500. So 250 mg, 500, 750 and 1000 and the extended release tablet usually comes in 500 milligrams as well as 750 milligram tablet. And for the pediatric population, oral solution is present at a concentration of 100 milligram per ml. Usually it comes as a 300 ml oral solution bottle. So here is the oral solution. So you can see it is 300 ml. Common brand names are Kepra, Levira and Levipil and usually comes in a concentration of 100 milligram per ml. And here we can see Levitastem tablets, 500 milligrams. And we also have an IV formulation, which is commonly used for as a loading dose in status epilepticus as an off-label use. And it comes in a dose of 500 milligrams, which is either has to be diluted in 100 ml NS or it can be present as an RTU, that is a ready to use infusion. Okay, so it's available both as an ready to use infusion or it is present as vials, which needs to be reconstituted in 100 ml of normal saline. And it usually comes in 500 milligrams. So this is regard to the different preparations of levetiracetam. Now let's come to the dosing. So for focal onset seizures and primary generalized tonic-clonic seizures, when we come to the immediate release tablets, okay? So first what we do is, usually we start at 500 milligrams twice daily. Then after this, every, every two weeks, okay, we have to increase the dose by 500 milligrams twice daily. So we keep doing this till we achieve the target clinical response, that is seizure control, or till we reach a maximum dose of 3 grams per day, okay, 3 grams per day, that is 1500 milligrams twice daily. And with regard to the extended release, it is the same only, but the thing is instead of giving 500 milligrams twice daily, we give it as 1 gram once daily and it is increased every 2 weeks by 1 gram per day till we reach the maximum dose of 3 grams per day. So remember that for the uh, uh, oral, uh, for the tablets, there is oral formulation, the maximum recommended dose is 3 grams per day in a patient who is having a normal renal function. Now coming to status epilepticus, usually it is loaded at a dose of 40 to 60 milligrams per kilogram, which is given as an IV infusion as a single dose over 5 to 15 minutes and the maximum dose is 4.5 grams per dose. Okay, so different literature gives it differently, but usually it is mentioned from 3 to 4.5 grams per dose, okay, as a loading dose in status epilepticus. The loading dose, the maximum dose can be from 3 to 4.5 grams. Now coming to the dosing in pediatrics. So this actually depends on the age of the child. So for the first six months, it is started at 7 milligram per kilogram per dose twice daily, after which it is increased every two weeks by 7 milligram per kilogram per dose twice daily, till we reach the, uh, till we reach the target clinical response or a maximum dose of 21 milligram per kilogram per dose twice daily. And when the child is six months to four years of age, the starting dose is a little higher. It is 10 milligram per kilogram per kilo, 10 milligram per kilogram per dose twice daily, which is then increased every two weeks by 10 milligram per kilogram per dose twice daily, till a maximum dose of 25 milligram per kilogram per dose or till the desired clinical effect takes in. And 
from 4 to 16 years of age it is again 10 mg per kg per dose twice daily increased every 2 weeks by 10 mg per kg per dose twice daily till we reach 30 mg per kg per dose twice daily okay so depending on the age group uh, the dose varies a little but after 16 years it is the same adult dosage which we have discussed earlier now coming to the adverse drug reactions so uh, usually in the first few weeks of starting levetiracetam the most common acute side effect will be pns depression so this could take the form of ataxia fatigue dizziness asthenia and even increased drowsiness and somnolence so remember that the most common the most common cause of discontinuation of levetiracetam in patients is because of the increased drowsiness and most of us uh, assume that it is only phenytoin, carmesipin and lamotrigine that commonly causes uh, serious dermatological reactions but that's not always the case remember that even levetiracetam can cause steven johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis and sometimes even dress syndrome and another very important adverse drug reaction of note is the neuropsychiatric manifestations of le uh, levetiracetam therapy so this could take the form of aggressive behavior agitation emotional inability and sometimes even serious depression and suicidal ideation so uh, before starting a patient who is a known case of depression or has a history of depression in the past uh, you have to start levetiracetam in those patients with caution now coming to the pharmacokinetics it has an excellent oral bioavailability of 100 percentage very low protein binding of less than 10 percentage and very very important is there is no cytochrome p450 dependent metabolism okay so this plays levetiracetam in a very very unique uh, situation in the sense that when you want to start uh, a drug uh, for a patient who's having a seizure who's on polypharmacy okay let's say the patient is on polypharmacy you know, like multiple drugs patient is taking att for cns tb or patients on heart or for that for any other polypharmacy for that matter because of the very less drug interactions okay so levetiracetam because it is not metabolized by the p450 system it is independent of that uh, there are very few drug interactions so in situations where the patient is having polypharmacy and you don't want a lot of drug interactions levetiracetam has a very unique role to play another thing it is it does not have very any significant hepatic metabolism it is predominantly a renal excretion okay and it has an elimination half-life of six to eight hours and because of the predominant renal excretion it has to be it has to be used in caution in patients who are having renal dysfunction and the dosage maximum dosage will vary depending on the creatine clearance so patients with a creatine clearance of 80 to 130 the max dose is 500 to 1500 milligrams bd and from 50 to 80 it is 500 to 1 gram bd and 30 to 50 it is 250 mg to 750 mg bd 15 to 30 it is 250 mg to 500 milligrams bd and for patients who are having less than 15 creatine clearance the maximum dose is only 250 to 500 milligrams once daily and because levetiracetam has a predominant renal excretion it is a dialysable drug so just like lactosamide, we have to give a supplemental dose after every session of hemodialysis and this usually is 250 to 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams post hd session and please prefer the immediate release tablet of levetiracetam in patients with renal dysfunction please avoid the extended release tablet and as repeating again since because of the predominant renal excretion in patients who are having hepatic impairment there is no need for dosage adjustment so again levetiracetam plays an important role in patients who are having chronic liver disease or liver impairment here we can use the either here we can use levetiracetam as an anti seizure medication safely and with regard to pregnancy it is category c and the patient still needs periconceptional folic acid but compared to the other anti seizure medications like uh, sodium valproate or phenytoin it is relatively safe okay with regard to pregnancy it is relatively less teratogenic compared to the other anti seizure medications but however it is significantly secreted in the breast milk almost 80 to 130 percent secretion in the breast milk and sometimes can cause drowsiness in the breastfeeding infant so unless the risk benefit ratio warrants so it is better to avoid the drug in lactating female patients so that's about levetiracetam we'll meet in the next drug